So in my case, I will not start match T. I will start match 3DX because match 3DX includes all the, extra, um, the functions to measure uh, terrain models as match T itself. And therefore here, I will close here the DT master. I will not need to save this project here and the data because I already have these DXF files created in before. And so I will exit and not save here and then start capture match 3DX. And then in match 3DX here, we will then create our first area. And this is by importing this borderline that we created. So here in this process, we will import this project boundary area as a DXF. And uh, we will run this here with import. And then this will then be created as a new area. So let's do this import selecting the DXF file DTM area. And then we can here see if I would have measured multiple polylines or polygons, then I would have here multiple areas um, shown, but I only have one polygon and this polygon has 45 vertices. And this is exactly the one that we will now use. And the name of the layer becomes our area ID and then underscore zero because it's the first polygon. If I would have multiple polygons, then they will be called DTM underscore area underscore one, two, three, and so on. And now we can start to um, change our parameter settings. And in this case here, we will select in the, um, in our commander, the edit function. So we select the area, press edit, and then we will um, here in the strategies so make a new strategy. So this is then done here, selecting this area, pressing edit, and then in the strategy part here, first, of course, selecting the correct type. So in my case, it's a feature based matching. And then when I have here selected the correct type, then I can here go into the strategies and make a new strategy. And I will here call this new strategy DTM. And then in this case here, demo. And then we can now define for this strategy our parameters. And I will here select feature based matching. I will use here undulating and keep the default settings. You see always when I change my terrain type, then the acquisition method is applied automatically. It does not need that we need to select them as they are, but these are good standard settings. Yeah, so here, in our case, the model type in this case was to selected as feature based matching LSM and the terrain type in this case here, selected for our terrain and I used undulating. Then we will save this strategy. And after we save the strategy, then he will automatically our software uh, ask us to set some standard settings, for example, for the grid size. So I will here save this strategy, say OK. And then it will offer me here an average grid size for this project. And this is typically depending from the terrain type. So it's then either 30 times the ground sample distance, 25 times the ground sample distance. So there are different average grid sizes we offer by default. Um, but of course, we can then say we want to generate here a two meter DTM or whatever our project needs. And in our case here, uh, we will in this uh, demo from chapter five, also we selected a grid size of two, but you can also select three or five meters. Then we will define our output directory. And in our case here, I will here create the output directory inside here this part. So I will call this here DTM demo. And here I will then create my output and I will not generate an additional grid. So I will switch this here off. Um, my output here is also a grid when I run feature based matching as a last file. If you want to store it in a scope DTM format, then you can activate here this additional generation of this grid. 
Then we have then here selected these output and in the advanced we could now here make some changes but I will keep the default settings so optimized as balance um, and start and stop level default. If you are interested into more of this you can read here in the reference manual um, about these parameters in the in chapter 3.3 uh, here the acquisition and um, parameters are explained. Then consider morphological data. This is something we will now use for the DTM generation and therefore we will go into the advanced tab, uh, sorry, in the morphological tab and in the morphological tab we will select consider morphological data and then we will import our DXF file and convert it into a data that can be used in a good way for Match3DX and Match-T. So here I go into morphological, consider, then I select my file. In this case here I select my DXF file. Uh, sorry, I have to convert it. So I convert the DXF file and I select the DXF file and then again here uh, we can say next and then apply what is what. In this case the names are self-explaining uh, because I named them the layers in a way so that I can easily assign them. So break lines are break lines, exclusion areas are exclusion areas and the object shapes I won't use it now in the current process I will use them later on in the DTM toolkit so I will here ignore unassigned layers and then say next and then we can continue. And now the data is stored in a Winput format which is an internal format from our info software and can be now used in this processing. And now we will activate the break lines and the exclusion areas and hit the default settings. This is the standard deviation where the single vertex of the break line has the same weight like the matched points of the image matching so the break line won't have a big impact and if I want that the break line has a big impact then I would make the standard deviation three to five times smaller so then each vertex has a strong standard deviation so in my case here I will put them down here to five centimeters and my exclusion area I will expand the distance here just to be sure that I when I measured the roofs of my buildings that perhaps I included a few pixels so I will expand this by one meter the exclusion areas just to be sure no points are matched on top of the roofs and therefore then hopefully our result will have a good terrain model that we extract. That's it so these are the settings here and just to go through the tutorial in the reference manual so we converted the DXF file we defined what data is what here then um, if you have layers that are not morphological data then don't assign them and ignore them during the import and then there's the summary then we finish the import and then we here define what morphological data we want to use we set the default standard settings with this button and then uh, you can change them here according to good values typically as here mentioned we use a third or a fifth this is depending now how strong you want to um, evaluate these data sets here and in this um, reference manual here we defined six centimeters I used now here um, four or five centimeters and they will have now a stronger impact and when we are extracting our terrain model then the break lines will have a strong impact to generate our terrain model which is great and then we also um, have the exclusion areas in this uh, reference manual the expansion distance was added to two meters now I used here now one meter it's just that, the, uh, that we are sure that no points on top of roof buildings are included in our matching and that's it. So this is everything we need to set up. We can then close this part and start processing in our software the feature-based matched terrain model. 
So we can say here, okay, save the project and then hit the start button. And if you, um, and then we will take a look after the processing is done um, and check the result in this case.